This is Spoken Gospel. We're dedicated to seeing Jesus in all of Scripture. In each episode, we see what's happening in a biblical text and how it sheds light on Jesus and his gospel. Let's jump in. Judah is under Babylonian control. Jehoiakim, Judah's governor, unsuccessfully rebels and is waylaid by enemy skirmishes. When Jehoiakim's son takes over the governorship, he rules for only three months before surrendering to the king of Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar then empties the temple of its treasures and sends a first wave of exiles from Jerusalem to Babylon. Jehoiakim's brother also tries to rebel against Babylon, but fails. Nebuchadnezzar retaliates and besieges Jerusalem. The brother flees Jerusalem, but he's caught. As punishment, his sons are executed in front of him. His eyes are gouged out, and he's shipped to a Babylonian prison. Nebuchadnezzar burns Jerusalem and its temple to the ground and exiles a second wave to Babylon. The charred bronze of the temple is measured, broken down, and shipped into the empire's treasury. The temple's priests are murdered, and Judah begins its long exile. Nebuchadnezzar installs a new Judean governor under the watchful eye of Babylonian officials, but both the governor and Nebuchadnezzar's officials are immediately assassinated by a few rebels who avoided the first waves of deportations. Afraid of further retaliation, the remaining population of Judah seeks asylum in Egypt, the same place God rescued their ancestors from. God's people are back where they started, landless, enslaved to an empire, trapped in Egypt, and as good as dead. 37 years later, a new, more benevolent Babylonian king exonerates and frees Jehoiakim's son from prison. He seats him at his royal table and replaces his prison uniform with clothes fitting a man of his table. The history of Israel and Judah ends with the barest of hopes. Israel has fallen. Judah has fallen. The temple is burned. God's laws are forgotten. The kings are deposed. The prophets are dead. But a descendant of David has been shown grace and has been raised up near the center of pagan power. Israel's history isn't about dates and cities and kings. It's about God. And what we learn from Israel's national story is that God does not save through nations, temples, laws, kings, or prophets. God saves by grace alone, and God gives life even after death. Jesus is the culmination of Israel's political, prophetic, and spiritual expectations. Jesus is a son of David and the rightful king of Israel. He's the final temple and the law demonstrated. He's both prophecy come true and the last prophet. But for Jesus to be the savior of Israel's history, he must historically die. To save Israel, he must be Israel. To redeem Israel from her sin and rescue her from her idolatry, he must embody her sin and idolatry. Like Babylon, the empires of sin and death would overwhelm Jesus. Outside the city, rejected by his disciples, murdered by the powers, and forsaken by God, Jesus relives both Israel's history and Israel's death. But like Jehoiakim's son, Jesus rises from his exile and is now seated at God's table, clothed in glory, not at the center of pagan power, but at the center of life, death, and the universe. All authority has been given to Jesus. More gracious than the king of Babylon, he promises an end to our exile on earth, a home in his kingdom, and resurrection from the dead. Jesus promises to elevate and strengthen humbled, weakened, and humiliated people like us. And he will even replace our prison garb with robes of righteousness and seat us with him at his table. So I pray that the Holy Spirit would open your eyes to see the God who saves 
And may you see Jesus as the King who saves us from death by grace alone.